turns out to be an axe. Okay? Uh, what can you do with cows and axes? Meat. I guess you can slaughter the cows. You can't do much with the milk. There's not much you can do, right? Suppose instead that you've got lots and lots and lots of things coming out of the ground from lots of production technologies. Then the chances are good that you can take the wheat that's coming out of the ground and, and uh, um, grind it up into wheat flour, and you can add some water and you can make a pie crust in the first period. But you could also take some milk and you could make some ice cream in the first period. Let that time come to discrete moments, okay? Then in the second period, you could put the ice cream into the pie crust and it invented the ice cream pie. Okay? Okay. So, um, so in this plot, there's a curve that looks like this. It's a hyperbolic curve. And down here, not much happens. An example is Ethiopia. What are the Ethiopians doing? Well, they're growing a lot of coffee and selling coffee beans on the world market. Correct? And they're farming, except they're just selling their farmland to the Chinese. Above this hyperbolic curve, you make new kinds of goods. Now here's the essential idea. As you make new kinds of goods, you can combine them in new ways to make still more new kinds of goods, right? So think about the, air, the, the Wright Brothers airplane. It's a recombination between an airfoil, a light gas engine, a propeller, and bicycle wheels. So the more things you got, the more ways you can stick them together, right? So this leads to the idea that the diversity of production technologies and the diversity of goods and services in the economy can lead to an economy that keeps generating an explosive growth of new goods and services and new production technologies. I mean, for example, we used to make tools by flaking them. Now we've got machine tools that make tools, right? So we invent new production technologies. So I call being below the curve a subcritical economy that cannot generate an increasing diversity of goods and services. And above it is a supercritical economy that can. That doesn't have budget constraints in it yet. Okay? But if you put budget constraints in it, you aren't getting more or less the same thing. So let's ask about the global economy. Are we generating modulo the mess we're in? Are we generating an increasing diversity of goods and services? Sure. So somehow, the economy got itself from being subcritical to supercritical, the global economy, by gradually inventing new production technologies. And there's now evidence that this claim of mine is right. Um, um, Ricardo Hausman, who was uh, the finance minister of Venezuela, has published results recently that link some idea that goes back to Jim Jacobs in Jacob Cities. You might want to read Jim. She's just wonderful. She argued, I argue, and have evidence that as you increase the diversity of goods and services in an economy and if you increase the diversity of production functions, you increase wealth and growth. So what I've told you is sort of right, although we still don't know all the details. Okay? Now, let's suppose that that's right. It looks like it's right. Then what's going to happen? Well, we're in a supercritical economy in a bad slump right now. So leaving out the slump, there's going to be a continuing explosion of new goods and services. I mean, just think what's happened in the last 10 years on, on online and with, with twitting and Facebook and I don't even know what twitting is exactly. Tweeting. 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 <laughs> no, not twitting. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, don't, but, but I refuse to find out. <laughs> so, so, so against the press of a finite planet, there's going to be more goods and services that are going to roll forth. Why? Well, because people can. And I, I have a notion of the adjacent possible that I want to get across. Once there was a web, selling things on the web was in the adjacent possible. Okay? Once there was a lot of content on the web, search engines, search the web was in the adjacent possible. 
The economy keeps advancing into the adjacent possible. So does the biosphere. So does culture. Uh, and it's this sort of simple idea, and then you start thinking, gosh, it's true. <laughs> it really happened. So there's some funny sense in which the adjacent possible is getting larger and larger and larger as we make more and more things. There's more and more opportunities to make yet more things. The adjacent possible is like a house. When you enter it, you go through a door into a room. It turns out that there's a door into another room. Then you go through that, and then there's a door into another room. You keep Rooms keep being added on. It's true. We all actually know it's true as soon as I say it. It's true. So in a supercritical economy, um, the, the adjacent possible is exploding. Now let's put that together with a finite planet and the need to be sustainable, which is your primary responsibilities, and all of the stuff that I've tried to say. Now what's our task? I'm going to end there, and then we'll start the discussion. Um, what pathways do we have? First of all, there is a power structure that we can't ignore. Uh, and if you think it's benign, you're nuts. Okay, it's not. Power structures are out for their own power, and they have been. And the Romans showed that to us some time ago, and Marx was right. Power wants to maintain its own power. Um, and it's, it's extraordinarily powerful in the United States. It owns the media. Uh, it owns, it, it half owns Congress. Uh, Only half? <laughs> or, or all. <laughs> so, so that, that means... And you're that, implying there that Congress is not powerful. Oh, Congress is power, but the extent to which what they're doing is reflective of the power interests of the large corporations and the banks and so on, <coughs> as opposed to the interest of the guy in the street who just got his, who just got his, uh, who just got, you know, thrown out of his house because he can't make the mortgage payments. Where, where do you think the interests lie? Well, it's pretty clear, right? So that means that we can sit around and study this all we want to, but unless we come up with some kind of viral marketing plan, transform things. It isn't going to work. It's not going to work. So that's first and foremost. So we have to have a plan for we the people. And, and roughly speaking, we have to take back the country for ourselves. I don't know how to do it, but we've got to. I think there's glimmerings of things starting to happen around the world um, among we the people. That, 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 there's, that, that there, everybody's becoming kind of aware of and we're all aware of it. I'm not telling you something you don't know. We all know. The question is, is now what? Next thing is, we really have to do something about poverty. I think that this subcritical and supercritical thing I told you about is a main driver of economic growth. And the World Bank doesn't know it, and the IMF doesn't know it, assuming that they care about world growth and not just kind of getting countries in debt so that they pay their debt like credit card holders. Um, and maybe if we made use of these ideas, there would be ways in which we could abet growth in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, the next thing is, we can't keep growing in a way that keeps using resources. That's what your main task is. What are our choices? Either we, either or, okay? We, as I said, we change our value system so that accumulation of purple plastic penguins at the poolside isn't the simum bonum of, of, of first world society. And then what do we put in its place? And I think what we put in its place is our own humanity. And I think that the core of that is our own creativity. And I think that we haven't even begun to explore that. That's where what you do is you say of the poet, thank God there were poets. And what, 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 do, what do we remember? Well, we remember Homer. We remember Aeschylus. Yes? Mm -hmm. okay. We remember Socrates. So, um, there are cultural heroes. Well, that means we teach creativity. We teach people how to be creative. That means we change undergraduate education and our value system. Um, another aspect of it seems to me to be the following. We... Um, 
instead of producing as many nuclears as we are, uh, we load up all of our old sofas into container ships and take them around the world and have have uh, cheap sales of them so that we just read it. I mean, look, look at an antique shop, okay, where you go and you buy antiques. Nobody, nobody remade that old antique drawer that you just paid $4,000 for, but somebody made money on it, right? Okay? So, so that's a way that could help. You could have an awful lot of taking of what we've got and just exchanging it, is another thought. A third thought is, is that we're more and more and more doing things virtually. This isn't my idea, but somebody pointed it out. Who knows how many ways there's going to be making money on things like the web, which is relatively friendly with respect to impact on the environment. And the fourth thing is, we need a notion of enough. We do not have a notion of enough. Well, maybe we can give that up. Um, it's not obvious that that was true when we were hunter-gatherers. We shared everything, so maybe we can have a different society. So without all stop, but I hope that's enough to be of interest to everybody. And